This is The Change Physician, episode 167. Welcome back to The Change Physician. I am Melissa Katie, the Challenge Doctor, with my awesome co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro. And we're here today to discuss a little bit about the most amazing last two episodes with uh, Dr. Na- Naveen Goyal. Did I say it right? You did say it correct. You've known him longer than me, so I, I need to uh, ask you. Um, but obviously, an anesthesiologist by training, an entrepreneur by, oh, what's a good way to say that? An entrepreneur by learning along the way outside of the medical field and within. But um, yeah, I, I was just, I was pleasantly surprised to hear not just kind of his takeaways from his um, journey, which is the first part of uh, our first interview with him, which is kind of his general story of getting into medicine and kind of his realizations along the way. But um, the second part too, which was all this entrepreneurial expansion of his mind and options and businesses. So do you want to, you want to take away maybe uh, or share a few of your thoughts about it? It, Well, I'll I'll just kind of give the overview thing is um, kind of the big overview is you can see in Naveen that he has been active in the doing. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, he's been so involved with what he does that he that is so fast that there, there are so many details that, that I would love to hear more of for sure, because he's got a lot of things going on. And, um, and, and we couldn't even hit everything we could potentially have hit in those interviews because there are just... Uh, you know, I, I made a, a, ref, a reference about the, the South Park thing where there was like steel underpants and then two was a question mark and three was profit because he's jumping so fast and he has so many things that, that so many opportunities. Um, so we'll definitely have to have him back on here again. And it just, it, it was just, he just like throws it, oh, we just did this and you do some angel investing. And it's like, oh my God, is, is somebody who hasn't done any angel investing? I'm like, oh, what does that mean? So there was a lot of high level stuff. Um and a, and a lot of unpacking to do in there, but just so fun to see, uh, because as, as, as I've known him for a long time, we just reconnected again, but it's so cool to see somebody that you just really enjoy doing so well and, um, in, in really building businesses that provide value. I mean, th- this is something I think we've talked about multiple times throughout our episodes is people can go out and easily make money. Uh, and there are a lot of biz- businesses that are all about extracting money. Um, but the but a true entrepreneur, to, in my mind, is someone who's creating value. And it's clear that um, him and his companies and with the VC fund and, all, and everything that they're doing, the, the, the focus and the intention, like he said, the intention still remains on creating value. And um, so it was a fun, those were fun interviews. And I really, really enjoyed them. Yeah, you may, I was thinking... Like if you went to the first episode where he, his friend reminded him, he said he was so passionate about anesthesia and I couldn't help, but the, I knew I was going to bring this up later. I was like, you just get the moment you're curious, the moment you're um, just wanting to know more, it seems like he creates these passion, these passion, I want to say passion projects, but these passion um entrepreneurial kind of activities too. There's everything about what I heard from him, whether it was in his training and residency, um, where he got super passionate and excited about learning new things and like, um, you know, the physiology, the pharmacology, uh, there, it never stopped. Like there's, there's, it just keeps running together with, you know, like everything he said, an important statement was, you're gonna get bored in medicine if you don't create these creative outlets within medicine or outside of medicine. And I think he's a perfect example of, of the change physician that within medicine, he'd still learn more like from a leadership standpoint, how can I help lead people and being a medical director or expanding outside into the community and then recognizing there's a need and there's places that need more value. And then when you get into the second episode and he's creating these business entities It's not just about checking the boxes and what's the bottom line and the profit margins. It's about what kind of value, what are we creating for the anesthesiologists themselves who've been burned out, who don't have great environments to work in? How can we keep making it better? And then always keeping that, especially as that medical director, I think a lot of things he learned was constantly trying to get a feel, an open communication so that you're not 
just in this little world of money and dollars. And it's still about creating value and enhancing that value. No, I, 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 well, I completely agree. And there's a, the other thing, there, there, a couple key points. You really emphasize grow and then this whole idea like growth and you can call it a growth mindset and, and being able to continually learn is so important. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and I think that hit home to me because as, as we've talked about previously, I, I don't think I learned, I knew how to learn until I was 38. So that was way outside. I mean, I was done with fellowship. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know this whole thing about internal growth and learning because of all this kind of external, external stuff. And I think it is really easy to forget that as humans, it's important that we learn and grow. And Naveen ran with it. And one of the things that didn't make it in the interview is when I initially reached out to him and I saw him, I'm like, hey, that looks like Naveen. And I, and we connected and, and we had a little call. Um, one of the, you know, I'm like, I was just kind of contrasting because he's, I'm like, well, when did you learn this stuff? Because I don't think, were you learning it in residency? Because I was, you know, we were in the ORs together and I don't remember you doing, talking about this stuff. And he did it all afterwards. And, 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 what he initially said was, you know, after I got done with boards, so like when we take our boards, mm -hmm. he goes, well, yeah, I had kids. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know how I did this with kids, but um, I, I, I wanted to make sure I was still learning. And so we, then he started getting interested in all this investment stuff. And so for the listeners out there, I, I, one of the, you can't ever stop learning. That is a journey that never, ever, ever, ever ends. If, if in, if you, if it stops, if you're no longer learning, whether it's your field or it's a new skill or it's about relationships or it's about business, um, you're now stagnating. And that's really is, is it's kind of like living death in a lot of ways. So I just want to kind of emphasize again, the importance of learning. And Naveen is obviously somebody who's been doing that throughout his life, uh, which is huge. The other part I want to get onto, and this is an advantage I have because I've, I've known him and I knew him as a resident, what you get with Naveen what he presents, that's Naveen. He was, he was an amazing resident. He was, as I said, he was a pleasure to work with. And so again, if you, if you are working with people, um, I guess one of the things is, is we tend to lose track of people. And in this day and age where we have all these social networks, if you have someone that you were curious about, or, um, you know, someone you enjoy during residency or medical school, reach out to them again. Like, like, um, just to see what they're doing. Cause I'm, I'm just so glad that we reconnected again and to hear his stories because he was definitely one of the residents and now it makes me want to go out and reach out to more of them. Mm -hmm. like, man, they, these are, these are people I just love to, to work with. And again, we're not 20 years ago where we, we were doing snail mail. We have a chance that we can actually connect with these people again. And, um, so I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to encourage people to do that. I'm going to do it now. Like, 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 oh, these other people that I haven't talked to in a long time. This is a good chance for me to start reaching out and seeing how they're doing because of the joy, like the joy that connection had, it doesn't have to stop and, and be that one time uh, back in residency when you're like, ah, this was a great resident. I really enjoyed working with them. Well, what are they doing now? Reach out to those, those yeah. people. You know, you made me think of a few things. One is there is some level of uh, nostalgia and, and just the intensity of training that makes it easier to kind of reach back to people and uh, and then, and then also like how amazing people are to, to be able to get where you're at. And it's not to minimize anyone else outside the medical field. There's plenty of people that work really hard and, um, but it's pretty grueling to get to a place of residency and to survive that. And so, um, these are people that are many times very capable of some amazing things in life mm -hmm. and, you know, whether it's family oriented, business oriented, whatever it is, it's just, there's just some really amazing people um, that we work with along the way. And sometimes we just lose track. Um, you know, the other thing, uh, there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, just how important it is that what you put forth in your effort. And like, I, I really just get a sense that he genuinely cares about people and wants to do a good job. And um, even if you never, if no one ever says it, we feel it, you know, when your colleague or your comrade, whatever is, has their heart in it for the right reasons and their actions demonstrate that, you know, their beliefs, their values or whatnot. And um, it's always interesting how even in the realm of like five or 10 years of really working hard to just care for patients and how 
you don't really realize how people think of you or maybe refer or say nice things about you, which benefit you not just personally, but even professionally and, and open doors and opportunities for you. And, you know, I think of him as, as kind of that kind of person that, you know, if, if he, because of the hard work he's put in and the care he's had, that that serves him, not only because you're joy to be around and whatnot, but when you genuinely care, people want to be around you. So from a business standpoint, I can see he would be somebody that people want to do business with more likely than somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. And I I don't, I wish there was a way to, you know, that's like character, right? I don't know Mm -hmm. how you, it's, it seems in many ways to be common sense, but to, to really emphasize the people is to, to live in congruence with your values, you know, demonstrate your values through your actions, Mm -hmm. because that's, that's how we see. And, and I guess it's not feel so kind of silly saying it, but there's so many people that I could say, I wouldn't say so many, but there are people that, you know, who talk this big talk and their actions aren't, they, they, they're, they not alignment. they're not in alignment and it, and you can, it is so easy to see, you know, and now yeah, I think it's like a vibe. It's a, it's a total vibe. And, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to figure out how, like, well, how could we, what's the takeaway that a listener can, and can get from that. And I don't, I, I I'm struggling with it because I don't know how, what else there is other than, then demonstrate what your values are through action. And if you're not doing it, then work on doing it because it is, it is huge. It's important. People will see it. And it's so much more important than what you say. Right. Um, but I wish I don't have a magic button for anybody. I just, it's, it's. Yeah. Well, I think what you said is valuable not just for the people with their own actions, but the more you're in tune and aware of those actions that represent or in alignment with good values, the better I think you make in choices to work with people in a business setting or, or, or otherwise. But I think the more you're in tune and aware of it, that I think we end up making better choices and have a little bit more wisdom behind what we do later in life than sometimes when we're younger. Yeah. <laughs> and then and it is a little bit more challenging now. And I think we've, I think we've talked about this previously is the fact that with the social media, everybody puts on this face mm, yeah. and what you get may not be what, what actually is. So yes. are they saying, are they the social media person? Are they doing this? How are they, how are they actually demonstrating that? What are, what are their individual interactions with you? Um, how do they make you feel when you're talking to them? Um, Cause there, there, there is a danger in, in, in social land of people projecting something that is simply not how, who they are in reality. And yeah, we talked about this a long time ago. Um, but I think it is important to, I don't want to be trust people, but verify, I guess it's the easiest way is trust people. And if you're listening to somebody on social media, trust it, but verify, um, in it, in, I don't know, it, it's, yeah. it's just interesting how, how, how value-based actions really, really reflect the individual more than anything else. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think people are usually smart enough to put uh, put out what they know people are going to like, but it doesn't mean that that's truly who they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I think that people need to, to really listen to the story. I mean, there's actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually making a couple trailers for these uh, episodes because I think <laughs> there's some, some real like punchers right there that like just hit you in the face in a good way that remind you of some really important things. So one of the, one of the big ones for me was, was, um, and this is like so classic entrepreneur is entrepreneurs found value in other people's problems yeah. or you're finding value in your problems. And um, with, with smile MD and this offsite anesthesia thing that just blew my mind because it is such a nightmare. And, um, and we may, we talked about this probably quite a bit because we're all anesthesiologists and we've all had these experiences, but what, but it, for people who aren't anesthesia, Offsite anesthesiology is, is terrifying. It's risky. It's the highest um, right now, if, well, at least 10 years ago, and I can't see it going away. It was the highest portion of what we call anesthesia closed claims, which is when um, 
anesthesia is all about safety. And so they have this thing called the closed claim files where they look at malpractice claims in ones that were closed. And the highest preponderance of anesthesia malpractice claims are offsite. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I was just sitting there dumbfounded, like, here's this thing that all of us hate, all of us know are dangerous. It, here's someone who, who him and his partners looked at and said, how can we fix this? Or how can we make this better? Now, granted, they were approached by the, the dentist or whatever. And that's like true entrepreneurship, like being able to see those problems. And I, and I do think if you are a non-anesthesiologist, every specialty has these things that we hate, that we see your problems. And rather than saying, oh, I want to avoid them. I hate them. I'm going to try to cut them out of my life completely is how can you look at those problems now as opportunities to provide value? How would you fix that problem? And maybe you're not going to be able to necessarily do it, but it's a great thought exercise. Just working through, well, how would I solve this? Um, I'm in oncology and I hate nah, whatever oncologists have that's super dangerous and scary and they don't like to do it. Well, just sit down and start working through that. How would I solve that problem? And that's a great opportunity for you to start building the sort of entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, no, I just, I was just thinking it's, that's, it's even more critical because the business opportunities or the just desire by some people that have their own clinic and don't want to go to say during a pandemic mm -hmm. when things aren't allowed to go into the surgery center or something like that, or the hospital. Um, and they're trying to find, they're already trying to find a way to do it. And they might be doing it on their own without any anesthesia provider. Trust me on that. I witnessed it. Um, that that's uh, it's better to have the people from that realm and that training creating the solutions for that problem um, than the people not trained for it. Uh, yeah. And that, and that, it, that's the other thing is, is there's such a need for physician entrepreneurs here mm -hmm. because we have this domain specific knowledge that it took you literally years of studying to understand the language, the language, the culture, um, all the stuff that we've internalized that nobody else sees. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and yet venture and, and these other who may or may not have physicians involved, they're looking at it as a cash cow. And there's a lot of stuff I've seen businesses start in the pain world, that are externally driven by people who have no domain specific knowledge that are just chasing these dollar bills. In fact, one of them, I'm, I'm not going to mention the names or whatever. Um, and it was clear that they just, well, this is where the money is but they don't know what they're doing and they're not necessarily doing in the right way. And they're certainly not necessarily providing value, or at least really, really providing value um, for a long-term solution. So, you know, again, we like to, one of the reasons we started the change physician is physicians, there's this burnout and we feel overwhelmed and we feel like all this stuff is out, outside of our control, but what we have, people can't take away is our knowledge and yes. what we've learned and, and really looking at these things as opportunities, these, these things that we hate, there's problems there that can be solved by us, or at least that we can put input on, and nobody's going to be able to do it better for a lot of these things, or at least be able to provide that input because they simply don't have that eight to 10 to 12 years of training that's behind it. Right. And part of the value of that training is the nuances mm -hmm. and the worst case scenarios when the shit hits a fan, sorry. That kind of stuff is the stuff that drives the organization and the standards and the safety behind what is done. Because unfortunately, this is a reality. This is anesthesia specific or surgeons. Many times people are used to things not going wrong. And especially in a surgery center or a hospital, even if they're relatively not the, you know, not the healthiest person. So it's hard to imagine how bad things can go. <laughs> so, so that's why I, uh, I wanted to emphasize that because that's where the battle and the struggle is to keep efficiency at a reasonable rate, but still while maintaining safety. So, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if, and if an off and like offsite anesthesia, again, speaking specifically about anesthesia related problems and what Naveen was talking about with smile MD is not going to go away. Um, and rather than complain about it and do nothing, well, how do you solve these problems? You know, um, and I, I'm, I'm just so impressed by that. Like, I'm so impressed, like some, some three of the worst things I've ever, ever seen through my medical training, uh, were all offsite <laughs> and they all were deaths. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, man, uh, uh, so impressed, so impressed. Yeah, that's the one thing that's, like you said, when you have something that's very specific to your field and there's uh, something you can make better, you know, this this is um, this is a field in anesthesia where most people don't understand what you're doing or how to do it. So um, the fact he brings in a situation where you have one or two sets of hands that get it, I mean, that that to me, that's just game changing right there. Yeah. On top of other things, but that's that's huge. So what other takeaways did you have? Uh, let's see. I, I took a little note, but um, I like this whole liaison. Like he's just kind of recognized that there's a need for bridging uh, physicians to this entrepreneurial world, which I think you and I both have like dabbled in, and, and, and crawled through the dark to find our own way <laughs> to do it with some mentorship and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with his multiple titles, really, in the sense he's an author, a father, um, <laughs> entrepreneur, um, been a medical director, anesthesiologist, um, all kinds of stuff. He's definitely a doer. I mean, and I yes, contra- you and know, a doer. I, yeah, if you, I, I'm not super big into the whole, like, like genetics or you know this person was born but i do think that there are some traits specific things and i, I am firmly i'm firmly yeah. convinced that i have the worst traits for entrepreneurship ever it's an active <laughs> battle for me i overanalyze things i don't take action you know all the stuff um and 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 you can see he's a total action taker and and he makes that you have to move right i and one of the analogies i used to use for entrepreneurship about this was about 8 years ago is like entrepreneurship is like being in a dark room with all the lights there's you don't know what the room looks like you know what the size of the room is it's pitch black and we're trying to find the door out and in really that's the movement pass right because you you have to move and start feeling and you may bang your head into a wall or or do this but without that movement you're never going to find the door if you're just sitting there just like spinning circles like where's the door where's the door where's there analyzing it you're not going to get anywhere and it's scary and there's pitfalls and who knows is in there, but you have to move in order to at least find a direction. And if it's the wrong direction, at least, you know, it's the wrong direction. So you can choose. Right. right. So, no, it's, he's not the one that's paralyzed at the floor, you know, crying and, and like afraid of the dark. He's excited to find the door. Like he's wailing he's, his arms he's around. Like, he's like <laughs> bouncing back and forth. Let me try this and maybe just ask his wife. She'll probably agree with this analogy. Yeah. But I think, I think there's, and then the moment you feel like you're in the doldrums a little bit, it just takes your little, your pal to be like, Oh, let's get excited again. And just double down. And you know, yeah. they just go for it. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, do I take us out or do you want to? Well, I might want to say one more thing here and I, because that. I do think this is really important. And I, I brought it up a couple of times is your environment. Yes. Your environment is so key and being able to, to surround yourself with people who are doing the things that you want to do is crucial. Um, you know, uh, I, I think we don't necessarily think about the impact of environment as much as we need to, because we think that everything is so externally, but we're social creatures. Mm -hmm. We model a lot. And it's, it's sort of like, you know, molecules bouncing around. The more that you have that community, the more opportunities you have to bounce into a, a new potential opportunity or meet somebody or maybe stick with a molecule and, and, and create some new element or something. So that environment is really, really critical. And, and I think I'm aware of that because I live in a different, I was, a, I'm in a small town, I'm pretty introverted. Um, and so my, I'm not going to conferences as I used to go in, particularly with the pandemic. So this is an active problem for me is how to expand and connect and make sure that we're, that, that, that I'm, and I'm hoping other people are really maintaining those connections and developing either a, whether it's a virtual environment or mm -hmm. a physical environment, you need to, that environment really plays a huge role in, in the things that you're doing, the opportunities that you're seeing, the mindsets you're, that you're modeling um, and so on. So pay yeah. close attention to that environment. Yeah, I think with social media, Zoom calls, all these things, you can light the match. And then when you're able to take it further into in-person things, it just can allow that fire to, to grow in a, a positive way. Absolutely. Good. Cool. Well, I'll let you take us out then. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you all for joining us for this deep dive on our special episodes with Dr. Naveen Goel of Loud Capital, <laughs> Loud Capital, beyondphysician.com. Physician Underdog, which is a book, 
Um, great guy, great story. Um, definitely have to have him back again. Speaking of environment, if you're interested in being part of a, a network of physicians or at least connecting with the physicians, you can join us at thechangephysician.com, whether you are a physician or a physician ally. And until next time, stay well. Take care.